Hey, what's up? I'm Russ. This is Dapper Dividends. And if you want to make work optional through passive income like I do, congratulations, you're in the right place. Sharing more of our debt-free journey tips. And this is number five, where we're talking about mutual funds and 401ks and how you should invest or how I invest at least. Years ago in my 20s, I unfortunately bought into some FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt by a notorious gold bug who was trashing the stock market, and I bought into it. I dialed back my contributions to about 2% for a few years, which really sucks because I lost a lot of money that wasn't invested. I didn't lose it, but I didn't invest it properly where it really could have grown and helped out our future. So I don't want you to do that. So take this into consideration from my young, stupid example that you can avoid uh, the same mistake that I made. Very first thing, if you work for an employer that has a retirement plan and you don't know about it, where it's at, how to access the funds, how to look at how much you have, go to your HR rep, your HR rep will help you out. Just ask, hey, I wanna know about the retirement fund. I don't know how to look at it, view it online, whatever it is, talk to them. They'll put you in the right direction and get you to where you need to go. Came across this really interesting AARP article. It says a traditional 401k is a tax advantage retirement account that lets employees save pre-tax dollars that can grow tax-free until the funds are withdrawn in retirement. When you take distributions after the age of 59 and a half, your money will be taxed as ordinary income. However, 401k participants who start withdrawing their savings from the plan before the age of 59 and a half, as I unfortunately made the mistake of doing years ago, will generally incur a 10% early withdrawal penalty. If you follow the channel, you know I withdrew money to invest in gold, in precious metals, because I was convinced that the stock market was going to collapse again and it was going to be much worse than the 2008 uh, recession and market crash that I lived through. For 2021, the contribution limit for employees who participate in a 401k plan is 19,500, the same as 2020. So if you are under the age of 50, just remember 19,500 is your max. And if you're over the age of 50, you can play catch up, but don't put it on a hot dog. Here in Chicago, we don't do that and you can contribute up to $26,000 in your 401k. Check out why saving as much as you can is so very important because as the article says, the biggest factor in the size of your 401k balance at retirement isn't your rate of return, but the amount you save. I always preach here, it's not the amount of money, it's how much you save. Two employees who each earn $100,000 a year get 3% raises each year, and each earn 5% on their 401k plan. One contributes 5% of his salary each year, the other contributes 8%. After 20 years, the worker who invests 5% of her salary will have $222,386, but... The dude that puts in 8% will have $355,818, well over a $100,000 gain just by an extra 3% of your income over the span of 20 years. I recommend starting with 10% of your income, the pre-tax dollars, just automating it. That's the easiest way to get the ball rolling is to not even see that money, just have it go right in pre-tax. If you can do 10%, great. If you can't do 10%, check out what they say here, and I agree. One strategy they recommend plan participants use is that they enroll in the auto-increase feature that most company 401k plans offer. The way the auto-increase works is it increases your contribution automatically each year by 1% until you reach a predetermined cap rate of 10 to 15%. 1% a year, you're not going to notice. I would hope you could start out at 10, but if you can't, 5%, whatever you're comfortable with, talk to HR, tell them you want to enroll in auto increase 1% a year, or even better, 1% every six months. And before you know it, you'll be at the 10%. And don't forget, if you can max out at 19,500, you will be lowering your taxable income by $19,500. And the match, know what your company's match is and always use that as a minimum guideline to match. That is free 
money that you would be crazy to not take that free money. If your company matches 50 cents for every dollar up to 6%, which is really common, that's a 50% guaranteed return on that $1. You'd be loco to not take that. As the article agrees, the extra money from your company can add up fast. If you earn $100,000 and your company chips in 50 cents for every dollar you put into your 401k up to 6%, you're getting an additional $3,000 more deposited into your account per year. Again, free money, free $3,000, take it. Company matched 401k plans are free money. So at a minimum, always make sure you're putting in up to what your company will match. For example, if your company matches 5%, make sure you're contributing at a minimum of 5% to your 401k. And whatever your company matches, I strongly recommend that being your minimum investment. The next step in the process is knowing what to invest in and how much because you're going to have to allocate those dollars that are going into the 401k in some fashion. So here is a Vanguard breakdown of the different returns on the different mixes that you can use. If you were to allocate 100% bonds, the average annual return from 1926 to 2020 is 6.1% with 19 of 95 years having a loss. The other two iterations, 20% stock, 80% bonds is a 7.2, 30% stock, 70% bonds, 7.7%. A balanced portfolio is just a nice even mix of stocks and bonds. It reduces volatility, gives you a little bit of growth, not as much growth as going all equities and not as much risk reducing as going to all bonds, but this is pretty popular with a lot of people. So the average annual return of 40% stocks, 60% bonds is 8.2%. The 50-50 from 1926 to 2020 is 8.7% annual return, not too shabby. 20 years with a loss though, and if you go 60 stocks, 40 bonds, 9.1% average annual return, 22 years with a loss. Last is growth and it'll do just that. You're gonna grow your money faster. There's more risk, there's more volatility, but if you're under 40 years old, you've got a lot of time and you can easily absorb a lot of those down years because you're not gonna be pulling your money out. So 70% stocks, 30% bonds has an average annual return of 9.4%, but 23 years with a loss out of 95, so you're taking a bigger risk. 80% stocks, 20% bonds, 9.8% average annual return. So getting close to that 10%, 100% stocks is 10.3% return, but only 25 down years out of 95. If you wanna go 100% equities, you're gonna get a bigger average annual return, but just be aware that some years are going to be a lot more volatile. But if you have a 20 year period, which is a long time frame, I think this is the best way to grow your money. Not financial advice, just my opinion. Depending on where you have your 401k at, this is what you're gonna have to find out and do a little research on your own to find out what mutual funds are held. And you can always contact customer service because remember, you're paying an expense ratio on these mutual funds. So the company that runs it is going to help you out. They are your employee, talk to them. So we allocate like this, 40% in large cap growth, 25% in small cap growth, 25% in large cap value, and 10% international or emerging markets. Another option that has pros and cons to it is the target date fund. This is something that you can determine if it's right for you. You pick the date that you expect to retire, and at the beginning, it's gonna be heavily invested in stocks and very lightly invested in bonds. So it's gonna be focused on growth. But the older you get, they automatically start shifting the balance from growth to income or from stocks and equities to bonds. Now, this could be good to reduce volatility the older you get, but what we're doing and the reason I don't like this is because I'm building multiple streams of income in different portfolios outside of the 401k. I'm not worried about that volatility and the chances are I'm just going to be taking the minimum withdrawals that I'll be, the required minimum distributions, the RMDs, when I turn 59 and a half. And you know what? If I don't need that money, I may just be investing that right back into dividend stocks. Target date funds are the easy answer, the easy option in my opinion. And if they're right for you, I can't tell you that. You're going to have to determine that for yourself. But if you do need guidance, 
talk to the brokerage, talk to the company that is running this through your work. They will help you. Remember, you're paying an expense ratio. If it's Vanguard, if it's American Funds, call them and talk to customer service. You are paying them. They are there to help you. Do not forget that. So if you're maxing out the 401k or you want to create additional streams of income outside of the 401k that you can access early or you want to start a Roth, which is money that you're putting in after tax, you're paying taxes on that money, putting it into a Roth, and you will never pay taxes on that money again. And after five years, you can pull that money out for anything you want. Great vehicle to use, just another option. I'm gonna show you a few options that you can use to invest with no research, very hands-off, put your money in, let it grow, let it work for you, and I will talk to you there.